Um, so we've talked about the stockholders equity section. Now what we are going to talk about, if I can find, oh Lord, did I just kick it out? Yeah, statement of cash flows. Where's my folder? Okay, well, we're just... Yeah, that's intermediate. Okay, all I have to do is just pop something up real quick, and I'll have it. That's the other problem. I get too much open, and then I... Don't look at all that Amazon on there, guys. <laughs> 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 that's good. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. But we're going to be back on track real soon. I know. That's for sure. Okay. So, uh, we're on what, number 20? 28. Because I printed out your... Oh, you... 28? That's all we... No, 28. No, we're yeah, way farther. Right here. Uh, honey, I'm showing 50. Yeah, well, I'm 50 something. But oh, okay. Oh, page 28. Page 28. Okay. Well, let's. Boy, I was starting to sweat. If I, I have like 120 slides, and if I'm just on no, 20, I'm 20. like really in trouble. Okay. I think this is where we were, weren't we? And then yeah. we had Nick, was it, yeah. was doing so well. We just had him going on and on. Oh, there we are. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Please don't drop it yet. I promise I'll get better. Okay, so <laughs> we're back having fun. Statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flows is another financial statement, and it measures the various activities that involve only cash receipts and cash disbursements over a certain period of time. So the statement of cash flows is exactly what it, it says. It shows money's in and money's out. And it divides it into three types of activities. It divides it into operating activities, cash transactions in, cash transactions out, revolving the operating of a company, investing cash flows involving um, cash transactions in and out, revol revolving involving the purchase of assets or the sale of assets, and then financing activities would be transactions revolving involving um, borrowing money or issuing stock or paying dividends. So as you see here. This is the statement of cash flows for Eagle Golf Academy. The total net cash flows from the operating section, the investing section, and the financing section equal the net change in cash during the period. And it makes sense. So if you took the cash um, shown on the bank account on December 31st, of the year and then the cash shown on the bank account of December 31st the next year that change would equal this change okay the various changes in cash would show up on there let's look at exercise 1-9 exercise 1-9 shows there is various activities that took place Cash received from the sale of products to customers. Okay? Cash received from the sale of products to customers. That is money coming in, right? Cash received from the bank for long-term loan. What is that one? That is 
financing, so, but that's increasing. We're just going to show money's coming in, money's going out to show um, that is financing. Cash paid to purchase factory equipment would be investing. Cash paid to merchandise suppliers would be operating. Cash received from the sale of an unused warehouse. What would that be? The sale of an asset? Investing. Cash paid to workers? Operating. Cash paid for advertisement? Operating. Cash received for the sale of services to customers? Operating. Cash paid for dividends to stockholders? Financing. If we start at the beginning of the year for with $5,000, the way we're going to treat this is we start with beginning balance of five, we add the receipts, we subtract the payments, and we come up with an ending balance of 37000 Okay? Receipts. Right now, we're just, just we're just doing it one by one, okay? But after you guys are done putting this in, we now are going to create a statement of cash flow. So if you look at one nine requirement two, do you see how here we've broken down? the various activities. Do you see the sale of products to customers and sale of service to customers are cash inflows from operating activities, aren't they? And then cash outflows for merchandise to suppliers, for workers, and for advertisement. Those are cash outflows. And then we total them. So do you see we take the inflows minus the outflows of operating activities and come up with a net cash flow from operating activities of 30000 See that? The 70 in minus the 40 out gives us 30. Then cash flows from investing activities Purchasing factory equipment is a minus 50. Selling the warehouse is a plus 13. Net cash flows from investing, we have a minus 37,000. Then cash flows from financing, borrowing from the bank, paying dividends, gives us a net cash flow from financing of 39,000. We take the three activities, plus 30, Minus 37 plus 39,000 gives us a net increase in cash throughout the period of 32,000. If we started with 5,000, what do we end with? 37? Is that making sense? This is our cash flow statement, exercise 1-9. Now, exercise 112, Squirrel Tree Services reports the following amounts on December 31st. And then, in addition, the company reported the following cash flows. So we've got various assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity and we now have various cash inflows and cash outflows. What we're going to do is we are going to create a balance sheet. So let's look here. Let's go back here. Cash, supplies, prepaid insurance and building are all resources. They're all assets. So in order to create this balance sheet, we are going to plug those in to the, the responding assets. 
Their liabilities are everything that says payable, right? Mm -hmm. Stockholders' equity, we know, is common stock and retained earnings. The total assets better equal total liabilities plus stockholders' equity, right? We're kind of doing a lot here, but we're taking the information we've learned and this is applying it, okay? Tell me when I can move on. Would you like to hear another story? Just joking. Moving on. Moving on. The statement of cash flows. So now we need the, um, to create this statement of cash flows, we're going to show operating for activities, investing activities, and financing activities. So we take the inflows from customers of 40, the outflows for salaries, 22, the outflows for supplies, 4, to come up with net cash flows from operating activities of 34,000. Then cash flows from investing activities, the sale of investments, a plus 10, purchasing a building, a minus 62,000 gives us our net cash flows from investing of minus 52,000. Then we've got cash flows from financing, borrowing money from the bank, plus 20, paying dividends, minus 6,500, gives us our net cash flows from financing of 13,5. Our net decrease in cash because the 34,000 minus the 52,000 plus the 135 gives us a minus 4500 we began the year with 122 minus the 4500 we ended the year with $7700 That makes sense, guys? Yes. How you guys doing? Can I move on? Tell me when you're done recording or writing. Okay, so as you see, as we're bringing this all together, you're going to understand the links among the financial statements of Eagle Golf Academy. So we see the income statement, the net income ultimately flows into the statement of stockholders' equity, right, to give us a total of total stockholders equity or our total common stock and total retained earnings. This information then is used to flow into the balance sheet. Do you see this total stockholders equity of 26,000? We get that from and put it into the balance sheet where it says total stockholders equity 26,000. Then our statement of cash flows we can complete because we need to know what our ending 
cash is at the end of the year 6900 here it shows our 6900 so we know we're going to have to balance with that do you see what i'm saying so they all link together we technically have to start with the income statement and then from that use the income statement to complete the statement of stockholders equity then from that we need that statement in order to complete the balance sheet and we need the balance sheet in order to complete the statement of cash flows so there's a link among them all so exercise 113 this is something that really just helps you go through the various financial statements remember in number one we're dealing with net income the income statement if our revenues are twenty seven thousand our expenses are eighteen thousand what does that make our net income nine thousand if our increase in stockholders equity is seventeen thousand ish increase um, seventeen thousand issuance of common stock is eleven net income is twelve what would our dividends be so basically what we're doing here is we know from the beginning of stockholders equity to the end it had to increase seventeen thousand well issuance of common stock is eleven plus our net income of twelve that means right there that's twenty three thousand if our total increase is seventeen how much did we pay in dividends six thousand do you see because that reduced it to our total increase of seventeen assets are twenty four thousand stockholders equity is fifteen thousand what does that make our liabilities nine assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity right total change in cash is twenty six thousand if net operating cash flows are 34, net investing cash flows are minus 17,000, what would net financing cash flows be? Wouldn't we pay, take plus 34,000 minus 17,000? That gives us 17,000. What's the difference between 17 and 26? Nine. So do you see how the net cash, financing cash, have to equal that to come up with total change in cash of 26? Activities? Correct. They, they, each one is separate, but together they combine to total change in cash. Usually when there is fraud or some means of doing something wrong, your books are still going to balance. It's just there you're going to notice that something doesn't add up correctly. So for example, if someone's working at a department store and they are have the ability because there aren't controls in place to issue kind of credits, they can have their buddies come in and say they're issuing credits. Everything's still going to bounce uh, balance. It doesn't mean that fraudulent activity isn't going on just because things balance. 
When Enron had their huge accounting scandals, the books still balanced. They just were lies. So we'll talk about that in length. That's why a lot of accounting is about learning and getting a grasp of seeing where things just don't fit right based on past history, based on comparisons between other companies. But because of this double entry system, we're always going to balance. So we'll talk about that later, okay? Um, so moving on, all transactions that affect revenues or expenses get reported in the income statement. They ultimately flow back into the balance sheet through the retained earnings section. So basically, know when we're dealing with all this information. The point is, hopefully this financial information helps make people choose better decisions. It measures business activity and it reports it to end users. GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, are the guidelines we use in the United States to adhere to financial statements. We've got rules that show how we depreciate, when we record items, how much we record them for. So GAAP is what we deal with in the United States. The United States Congress has created the Securities Exchange Commission, which ultimately gave permission to FASB, which is the Financial Accounting Standards Board, to, make the, to be the body that makes the rules for the United States. The International Accounting Standards Board is the rule setter for the international community. They're called generally accepted accounting principles. I'm not going to spend much time talking about the role of auditors, but the point is we've had so many wrong, um, corrupt uh, professionals that are out to make a profit for themselves abuse the public that we've really had um, a hard time. Our, our industry has been smacked down to make it more painful when we do wrong uh, doing with as far as auditors and financial statements. And so auditors are meant to be there as an independent source to protect the public, to make sure when companies report financial statements, they in fact are reporting them correctly. So that is the main thing I want to talk about. It wouldn't hurt you guys just to take a look at this conceptual framework showing um, what the goal of a gap is, such as there are guidelines to assume each company stands on its own. It's its own economic entity. The monetary unit we measure it with is the U.S. dollar in America. We break financial statements into periods of time, generally a year, that we record the <coughs> income and the expenses. And all businesses, we create the assumption that there is a, the company will last indefinitely. In other words, if we prepared a financial statement knowing the company was going to be out of business in six months, is that fair to the public? No, we need to let them know that. So we prepare financial statements assuming and expecting on the company lasting for at least the near, the near future. Or the, you get what I'm saying. Distant future. Who wants to take this one, guys? We're getting close to the end here. Which of the following assumptions indicates that the life of a company can be divided into artificial time periods? Periodicity. Perfect. So guys, I am going to